Good evening. Hope everyone's doing well tonight. The topic I'll talk about tonight was uh, inspired by uh, some of the topics that Alex picked out for when we had uh, the men's retreat. I guess almost close to a year ago now. Um, and uh, it was uh, called Men on Fire. And uh, the first topic was, give me a willing spirit so that I can battle as I should. And the passage this is taken from was Psalms 51, verse 12. It says, David prayed to the Lord to restore me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. The NIV version uh, translation says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. David uh, prayed this prayer uh, after being confronted um, and made, we'll say, aware of uh, his, his transgressions. And he's writing and uh, saying this prayer as he's repenting for those events um, that transpired after him lusting and committing adultery with Bathsheba. I believe we're pretty all aware of this story that David sees Bathsheba bathing. He lusts after her. He falls in love with her. Um, he sleeps with her, and they conceive a child. Um, David tries to cover up his sin by having Bathsheba's husband come home and um, cover it up that way. And when that doesn't work, he has Uriah killed in battle. Um, but this psalm is a time when David is overcome by his guilt, and he writes it uh, as a repentance and asks God to give him a willing spirit. And so the, the real question tonight is, well, what does it mean to ask for or to have a willing spirit? And so before we get to that, I think it's important to answer the question, do you think David knew what he was doing was wrong? Um, I think the answer is yes. Um, but if the answer is yes, why did he do it? He knew that it was wrong, but he didn't care. He didn't have the desire to do what was right. He just simply didn't want to. And he was overcome by things of the world, such as lust and fleshly desires, that he chose to do what was wrong. Not having a willing spirit is something I bet all of us deal with on a daily basis. Um, maybe it's something along the lines of, you got some work to do around the house, or you have to wake up and go to work, but... Uh, you sleep in a little bit or you decide to not do your work around the house just because you don't want to. Uh, maybe you need to clean, mow, do the dishes, wash clothes, and you decide not to. Uh, maybe it's getting late and you know you have to get up early for work the next day or school or whatever it may be. But instead of going to sleep and preparing for the next day, you say one more episode on Netflix. And uh, these may seem trivial items to some. But uh, the attitude plays into a bigger picture in our lives. This can also be seen in our spiritual life as well. Have we ever said, uh, I don't feel like waking up and going to church on Sunday? Or I don't feel like coming on Wednesday? I don't feel like reading my Bible or studying. It's just easier not to do that. It's not fun. And people think it's weird. I don't like having to explain why I do what I do to other people. The list of excuses is endless, and I think we all get the picture. Uh, and I know for myself, I can very easily identify areas in my life that I don't have always the desire to do what I should. One thing that was told to me uh, before I got married was that people don't fall out of love with each other. They choose not to love anymore. They have no desire to work at it, and they just give up. Now, I'm by no stretch of the imagination perfect at being married, or the perfect husband, and I have far less experience than many of you in this room. But in my few years of being married, I can see what this means. After an argument with my wife, no matter if I feel if I was right or wrong, I have to choose to work out the issue. I have to choose to apologize. I have to grow, and I have to move forward. And that is choosing to love my wife and our relationship rather than my own desires and my own pride. Love is not just a feeling, it is actions and it is choices. 
And the same idea, ideology can be applied to our love for God. We must choose to love him, and we must actively pursue him. We are asked to choose a life of service to God, a life centered around worshiping and praising him, and to turn our backs on the ways of the world. Since we're all sinners, we have all fallen short and have chosen to do wrong. But as Steve often says, you have to have the want to. This phrase directly applies to David's prayer. The prayer, this prayer to God is asking for the want to. We need this prayer. We need the want to, to choose the righteous life over the worldly life. We need the want to, to serve him fully and diligently. And we must have the want to, to put on the full armor of God and go to battle with Satan against Satan and a world that does not seek God. So, as we depart here today and we uh, tonight, we go into our lives in the world. We should pray for a willing spirit, just as David did. We should pray for that so we can battle the world as we should. Just as we ask God to heal us or others, to provide for us, to protect us, we need to ask him for a strong spirit. We need to pray for encouragement and for the will to keep a strong heart and desire to serve God and live a life that he has commanded of us. Maybe you're struggling with the want to tonight. Maybe you need encouragement. Maybe you need to give your life to Christ. Whatever it is, you can come forward as we stand and sing.